I beg the board to realize that everybody has a responsibility to make sure that we move the discussion uh, in an efficient way. So we all have a responsibility in that regard. And I would like the record to show that I have provided the secretary with the resignation uh, letter that we have received uh, uh, making a vacancy on the board which has been filled. Okay, uh, we're now on to approve the agenda and we're already 19 minutes behind our joy. I would like to add or suggest that under old business we revisit the IT audit I introduced at my very first meeting here. Of information. Well, hold on a second. Um, so that would be like item D under. May we use yes. microphones, please? please. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. If, is my bell request that that failed at the last meeting? No. Let me get the microphone. Please. <laughs> what happened was I deferred. Turn it on, please. Oh, sorry. I deferred and. Um, the item for one or meeting because we were going to hear from Goldbusters. Now that we're going to hear from Goldbusters, I would like to revisit the IT. Cool. Okay, E under all business. Thank you for clarifying me on that. Uh, any, uh, Tracy, I asked you to hold up for a minute. You have now on the floor. Yeah, I just wanted to take a second to ask the chair to clarify that last statement about letter of resignation, new board member. Are you referring to Lawrence Shoup and the seating of Samsara yes. Morgan, or? Oh. Yes. Okay, I thought maybe there was something else. No, 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 no. Okay, thank you. Um, any other recommended modification of the ag uh, agenda? Chair, there might be necessary to go into executive session if we need to discuss personal issues. That would be up to you if you want to discuss at this point. I would say <coughs> if something comes up, uh, I don't know if everybody heard. Andrew raised the question about going into to executive session if necessary. My reaction would be if, if and when we reach the point when an executive session is called for, any member of the board can raise that and we'll make that decision at that time. I, Brian? I just feel like we owe it to the public to be a little bit predictable. So if, if we need to be in executive session for a portion of the manager's report, maybe we should formally agendize that so people know it's coming. That was what you were referring to. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. My report will be brief, but if the board wishes to go into detail and ask questions, then we should go into executive session. All right. The, um, does everyone in the room, including uh, people who are attending who are not members of the board, have a copy of the agenda before them? In that case, please be aware that uh, the question of executive session might occur in conjunction with the uh, IGM report if members of the board so request. Other than that, uh, here, no other proposed modification of the agenda. Do I hear any objection to the agenda as modified? Hearing none, the agenda is approved. And we're now uh, approving minutes and we're catching up on our time. Thank you all. Um, do I hear a motion on the question of the minutes? The minutes were emailed to all and a copy was distributed. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, is there any objection to the approval of the minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are approved and submitted. And we are now at public comments. Um, Frank, would you 
do me a favor and bring me up the sign up list, please. Has everyone had a chance this wants to make a public comment, had a chance to sign up? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for Virginia Browning, you're first on the list. And if you can grab the mic, you're going to have it. Can I just use the mic? Oh, I think you're going to go. Yeah. And make sure it's turned on. Okay, hold it a second. <laughs> so I see there's a camera over there. Do, can somebody. Uh, or you know, does it belong to anybody here? Oh, yeah, that's oh. mine. I, I was going to address that in the public comment. Is it on? Is it on? It's recording. Um, I could I, in light of that, I need to ask oh, its oh. purpose. Oh, okay. I was, yeah, I was, I, I'm uh, David Curtis um, from Marin County, okay. and I was invited here today uh, by Ann Garrison uh, to see uh, the board in action and for possible consideration in participating on the board uh, now or in the later date. And uh, I, I have my camera here recording, uh, but if you're not comfortable recording, I can shut it off. Well, the reacting, uh, sorry. Let me react this chair. I, I would request advance notice of anything of that nature so the board can um, point make a decision. Well, since the meeting is being recorded and going to be posted, I don't see that uh, another recording is. A, I mean, Mark's making a recording over here, too, so what's the big deal? I would have put my makeup on. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't help. No, no, it's <laughs> Folks, one at that. I was just making a request for advance notice. I, yes. I see Janet's hand, I see Margie's hand, I see um, Mark's hand, and I see my hand. So, this is a public meeting, so I don't think there's any problem with it. I just yeah. was curious. Let me raise a question. Does any of the object we can move through the debate? I I, I, I just want to ask you a question. Um, some of us um, have had the experience of having meetings that we attended recorded and then um, aired having been edited in ways that were um, made us, made people seem to say things that they didn't say or, you know. So as long as you just promise that you won't do that, I'm perfectly comfortable. Can I just clarify? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I just, um, if you, I have a YouTube channel, that's my name, David Curtis, if you go to YouTube. And whenever I attend a public meeting as a citizen, um, I just put the raw video out if, if it's okay to do that. And if not, I don't. Okay. All right, thank you. <coughs> you mean you would put out a five-hour meeting? I would just, um, I think my camera only runs for two hours um, <laughs> I, at high res, but I think I'm shooting at low res, so I might be able to get, uh, I don't know, X number of hours, and I would just post the raw video unedited. Now, I've done that uh, for a number of uh, events this year, uh, presidential campaign debates and stuff like that. Um, I get the consensus of the meeting is that for, we are public, and when we are public session, it is welcome. Please proceed. Thank you. Uh, Wait, that goes back out there. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I'm not, uh, since it was an executive session last time, I don't know what happened with JR, but I just want to say that if I seem to mischaracterize how many times people in, a, in another group opposed to JR, went on to the air and put inappropriate agendas about KPFA on the air. If it was only twice rather than over and over for some of you, I am sorry if I mischaracterized it. However, the fact is m numerous, several people from the so-called Save KPFA side went on the air in fund drives, in elections and other times and put things on the air that were completely inappropriate to put on for Pacifica and KPFA. And they're all still there. So
So, you know, whether you agree with the way JR did what he did or not, perhaps he should have, after he says he appealed to the manager, appealed to Pacifica for a redress for um, his tape being erased, etc. Perhaps he should have tried to get together a little protest or something before he actually took to the airwaves. I don't know. But all I do know is that other people from the other group did that over and over and were not taken off the air. And I think if there were more training at KPFA, I know it's a hard thing. I, apparently the, the paid staff is afraid of losing their jobs so they don't feel like training the unpaid staff as much as could happen. But if there were... a the, the union contract is up now. If there could be a provision in there that required people to come to meetings together. Now, is that really impossible to do? That seems like a good negotiating point to me. Then maybe people could um, somehow work together. Somehow there could be sanctions for not working together. And JR should get a chance to, to work it out. And everybody else to the satisfaction of the larger group. Thank you. David Curtis? Oh yeah, that was me. I'm good. Have you finished? I think so. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm here visiting from Marin County. Uh, I, I do some work in Emeryville occasionally. Oh. Yeah, please. Yes, that was more about you. Oh. Um, I'm a candidate for office in the 2014 election cycle. Uh, just started uh, the campaign, and um, I work in Emeryville. Uh, I collaborate with an architect in Emeryville, but I, I live in Marin, and then I'm established in a campaign office in, in Oakland uh, this month. Uh, so uh, Ann Garrison uh, is an associate, and she invited me here today. What are you running for? Oh, uh, Secretary of State uh, for California as a, um, can I say the party affiliation? Sure. Uh, Green, Green Party affiliation. Um, so that's that's what's happening. <laughs> and your name once again? Oh, David Curtis, C-U-R-T-I-S. Uh, if you type uh, David Curtis Green Party into Google, so that, that's me. Okay. Great. Oh. You don't need to clap. Okay, you're on. Uh, you're on, Mr. Bergston. Grab a mic. Is it uh, two minutes or three? Three. Three. <laughs> Okay, uh, my name is Daniel Borgstrom, and uh, about uh, J.R., you know, I just got to appreciate the ironies in this, multiple ironies. In the first place, here is uh, a black broadcaster. He gets, uh, he's on the air criticizing a white woman, a white woman who happens to be a starlet, a KPFA princess, and he is saying, among other things, he is saying that the station has a anti-black Jim Crow climate. Well, what happens when he makes the, after he makes this, he gets suspended without due process. So what does this look like? I mean, stop and think, what does this look, does it look like he might have a point there? I mean, whether you agree with him or not, consider what it looks like. Now there's another thing. Uh, I've heard from, I keep hearing from multiple sources that uh, he endangered the station by calling FCC attention to some, to an error, you, getting on the air, getting the F word on the air that this uh, other programmer did. Well, apparently she did get the let the F, F word slip out. She endangered the station, or that's the way it looks like to me. $300,000 fines, that's endangering the station. Uh, he called attention to it. Okay, maybe that's bad, maybe it isn't. How, the, how does Save KPFA handle this? And Save KPFA is not your legitimate name, by the way. You borrowed it from someone. You stole it, hijacked the name from someone else, but how do you handle this? Uh, by not only suspending him, but announcing, making a public issue of the fact that you are suspending him for 
uh, calling at FCC attention to this. I mean, what you're doing, it's like getting out, it's like saying, hey, FCC, did you see this? Hey, in case you didn't hear this, FCC, are you out there? Hey, this is what uh, this is what's going on. Um, I find that kind of incredible that you're making a public issue of that this happened. You're making a public issue, a public display of cronyism, of unfairness, um, all these bad things. And this is supposedly a progressive station. That's what uh, I think. Some of us would like to think of it that way, and we would like to be better than the Democrats and the Republicans. We see this in the society around us, that whistleblowers are um, punished in various ways. Uh, there's Bradley Manning, who's in jail. Uh, okay, time's running out here. Oh. Okay, uh, yeah. That's just, uh, thank you for hearing what I had to say. Thank you, sir. That ends the people who have signed up for public comments. We are now uh, entering item number six on the agenda, which is announcements. Any announcements? Oh, Any? yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I think something we can all agree on is the MS MSRN. Oh, 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 yeah. Both of you me. Uh, the Free Speech Radio News Fundraiser, uh, this month, a uh, week from tomorrow, Sunday, April 21st, at 5 to 7 at the UU Fellowship. So I'll put the flyers back, or I've got a few, so I'll just put them back there for anyone. And, uh, and whatever else. That's all. Thank you. Joy, did I see your hand? Yes. Joy Moore? Yes. Um, tell me off the subject. You can call me on it later, but... Tomorrow <laughs> is the opening of the Berkeley Historical Society's exhibit Farming in Berkeley from 1850 to 2003 and I am the opening MC. Right. It's from 2 to 5 over at the Veterans Memorial Center on uh, Center Street. So please come out. It's a really exciting show. Thanks. Sounds to me like an appropriate announcement. Marvin? Yes, <laughs> Alameda County and the um, <clears throat> the Alameda County Sheriff's Office and the City of Berkeley are looking into buying a drone. Um, and uh, this matter was referred by the Berkeley uh, City Council to the Commission, the Police Review Commission, and to the Peace and Justice Commission. Those two commissions have combined forces, and um, appropriately or not, on May first. Uh, on May Day, we'll be holding a uh, town hall meeting to hear uh, concerns and comments by Berkeley citizens on whether or not Berkeley should participate in this process. The location has not yet been announced, but I'm hoping that um, we'll be able to get word of it onto the radio, and I hope you will watch out for it. There will be flyers and announcements, and um, if necessary, you can always go to the City of Berkeley webpage and check the calendars for either the Police Review Commission or the um, Peace and Justice Commission, which will have the location and exact time. It will be in the evening on Wednesday, May 1st. Review and Peace and Justice one? Yeah. Oh, no, Police Review and Peace and Justice are two separate commissions. Okay. One more. Oh. <laughs> Another thing I think we agree on in the next month, we don't know the timing, that they will make the choice about the Berkeley PO post office. And uh, so there's a flyer back here you can get on the list. We really want to have a reaction, whatever it is, because it's about the privatization of the whole, the whole system. Right. Thank you. <coughs> Any further announcements? Any further announcements? Last time. Any further announcements? Okay, we're ready to move into item number seven, which is the report of the interim general manager. Uh, before we do that, since I have the mic, I just want to note for the record that Cynthia Johnson has arrived and Ramses Town Nichols has arrived. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everybody. Uh, just a few brief remarks this time. I want to. Um, 
mention that our treasurer will be handing out some financials during her report, um, and so you'll be getting those financials shortly. The unpaid staff organisation meeting and new hires. I sat in on UPSO, the Unpaid Staff Organisation Council, this past week. We had a productive two-hour session uh, at their quarterly meeting. One of the discussion points related to the recent hire of an assistant subscriptions person, uh, James Nitson. After receiving about 50 applicants and sorting them down to a dozen, the five-person committee <coughs> made their choice. I believe the process was fair. The committee spent 12 hours interviewing the final 12 candidates. Based on the comments of the UPSO representative who was part of the higher committee, the UPSO meeting deemed the process fair. It was pointed out that deliberations of higher committees are private. The process of forming the committee is transparent, but the deliberations are, are private. Um, upfront hire. Uh, the KPFA News Department also announced recently this week the hire of Tina Buckman and Maria, uh, Murray Choi, Maria Choi, selected to serve as vacation relief hosts for Upfront. Tina is a long-time News Department unpaid staff member, and Maria most recently has been a producer of Apex Express, training for both is in progress, and nearly a dozen talented KPFA producers applied. We thank all of them for their contributions. I want to point out that this hire is for when the upfront host is on vacation. This is not, I repeat, not an additional position for upfront. Under our union contract, we are duty bound to provide paid replacements when a paid employee is absent for at least a week or less than two months. Management is uh, duty bound to guarantee coverage of duties, including, if necessary, a temporary half-time paid replacement, and this applies primarily to news and public affairs. FSRN, um, yes, there is going to be uh, an event. I think it's next Sunday, I'm correct? Not this, but next. And uh, urge you to tell your friends about it. I think I mentioned last time uh, Pacifica does owe FSRN some money. Uh, KPFA kicked in $35,000 to keep the shop open last month, uh, and that will be deducted from our central services, that's my understanding. But we hope FSRN continues, it's an important part of our Pacifica and affiliate network. I will share the little I know regarding events east of here in New York and Washington DC. I understand that WBAI is still in quoting the executive director complete distress. The ongoing monthly rent for the WBAI transmitter at the Empire State Building, I understand is $60,000 a month, meanwhile, WPFW is reported in a volatile situation with demonstrations outside the building and a possible lawsuit over the Clear Channel lease, which has not been signed, I understand, for its new proposed building. The move is very unpopular amongst programmers. Meanwhile, both stations are Pacifica Central Services. I expect PMB members have better and more information than I do, and they may report. Uh, Goldbusters will be visiting KPFA again during our May fund drive, which begins the 1st of May through the 24th. Their visit will be May 6 through 9, on Tuesday the 7th at 2 p.m. and then at 6 p.m. Goldbusters will be running pitch workshops for our staff, and on Thursday, May the 9th, Goldbusters is available to meet with LSB members at the K at KPFA conference room at 5 p.m. on May the 9th. Union negotiations are due to begin this month with the interim executive director's involvement. Uh, it's an important negotiation. Um, I've had a couple of preliminary meetings with the CWA and uh, I look forward to these negotiations. KPFA's 64th birthday, April 15. We planned a 64th birthday fundraising event at Venetia Restaurant starring Wavy Gravy. We sent out a thousand invitations and tickets at $150 each or two for $275, but we received too few responses, only 20, and we needed way more than that to pay for this. And so the event was cancelled. It was a fundraising event we planned at, and we didn't want to lose money, we needed to make money. We do plan a picnic later this year, the Outreach Committee 
along with uh, some of us at KPFA are working on that. Personnel issues. Uh, let me get to that in a minute. Earth Day, April the 22nd. We plan a two-hour Fukushima special based on the New York City Symposium on the medical and ecological impacts of the Fukushima nuclear accident held in New York Academy of Medicine last month. Uh, we'll be running that um, on Earth Day, April the 22nd. Some of that. I mentioned our spring drive begins May 2nd through 24th, 24 days with a goal of approaching $760,000, which is a lot. Very briefly, we've got a great KPFA speaker series coming up with Gar Alporovitz, uh, Jeremy Scahill, his great film, which I haven't seen, but people tell me it's great. Eve Ensler will be here talking about her memoir, mem mem her, uh, memoir and the World treasure, Eduardo Galeano, the great writer, will be here to discuss Children of the Days, a calendar of human history. I wonder if KPFA will be in that, but uh, great writer. Okay, KPFA personnel issues. Let me get on to that. Um, I'm still waiting to hear from, a, uh, I'm still awaiting a specific response and an action plan from Pacifica regarding the pressing personal issues, some of which have been brought up here by our um, uh, public comment that sent us into executive, se executive session at the last LSB meeting. Late yesterday afternoon, I received a phone call from Interim Executive Director Summer Reese. She told me that I should be prepared to vacate my office at KPFA next week. I asked why. She said, quote, in response to multiple allegations of racism at KPFA during my tenure, Unquote. She told me she'd made up her mind. I said I would not discuss this on the phone and needed a face-to-face -face meeting as soon as possible. And she agreed to meet this coming Monday. The interim executive director confirmed this conversation in a brief email. At this time, I'm still interim general manager at KPF, KPFA, where I've been now for more than two years, and tried my best to stabilize the station. I know we have a long way to go, but first we need a stable platform, some balance. I point out that we're coming into another fund drive, beginning, as I said, uh, the first of next month. There's unrest at KPFA because of the unresolved issues, these personnel issues, which I mentioned, and now I'm amongst them. I don't know who Summer plans to install as the interim general manager, she did say I could run for the GM position if and when that is advertised. Thank you, that's my report. Okay. Um, I saw Dennis' hand. Oh, thank you. I saw Marty's hand, I see Joy's hand. Am I missing anybody at this point? And Brian. Um, and my Ram says, and I hope I'm getting closer to the correct pronunciation of your name. <laughs> so, okay. okay. And Frank. Thank you. And the first one is Janet. Yes, hi. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Um, I had a question about the UPSO grievance pro protocol. Uh, there is such a protocol that is online uh, on, on the kpfa.org website. And I want to know whether you have signed on to that protocol. You know, is there like a contract, that kind of thing? And uh, if not, why not? And if so, have uh, any UPSO grievances come to you through that po protocol? Um. Uh, yeah, why don't we get the questions as we have in the past and then Andrew can uh, answer them all at once. I think it's a better use of our time. The next person is Marty. I, I just wanted to say, um, Well, you think you'd be trained by now. Oh, uh, really? Mm -hmm. um, I just not alone. Um, I just wanted to make a, a, a couple of comments. Um, the, um, the lawsuit that was filed um, in Washington uh, concerning the move of the station 
from one location to another, complicated story, uh, which we can talk about when uh, we talk about the P what's going on at the PMB. Um, the, it, was a, it was a request for a temporary restraining or, or order to prevent the move, and that was denied by the court on Friday. The, the plaintiffs, of course, have an opportunity to appeal that, but um, at this point, no temporary restraining order has been issued. Um, and I had something else, but I don't remember what it is. Okay, that's okay. Okay, George. Um, Mike, please. I wanted to ask Andrew um, a little more information about the hire for upfront. Is that position benefited? And what category is those, are those people? Are they unpaid staff? Are they union? Are they at will? Are they part-time temporary? And um, and for that, that's that one. And then um, for free speech radio news, did have you you didn't say whether or not you heard anything about whether Pacifica was actually going to pay what they owe? Um, if you know, if you don't know, it's okay. And. The last thing, I think I'm gonna pass. That's that's good enough. We can get if I can get some discussion on that. Brian, um, I have a motion in reference to what we just heard. I don't know if you want me to hold off till we get answers to questions. I think so. Please, we should finish okay. this whole period. Thank you. Um, the next person is Ramses. Microphone. Hi. Yeah. Um, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I wanted to say a couple of things. Uh, first, I, uh, I'm really glad to hear that uh, Marie uh, Che was hired for uh, the upfront position. Um, I think she brings a lot of knowledge and a lot of skills. Uh, she's someone who's young and Korean-American and you know has a lot of perspectives on community issues and labor issues. Uh, that's how I met her and know, got to know, to know her over the years. So I'm really glad to, to find out that she's going to be uh, working there and and I would you know also want to find out more about you know what exactly are those positions are they you know what are they categorized as I, I would like to hear about that too and uh, at the same time I w would like to ask uh, can you specify it's just a little bit more in regards to what you're waiting to hear back from from Pacifica regarding the, the situation with JR I, I wasn't sure I wasn't very clear on that so if you can just kind of recap it again appreciate it and the last person on the list is Frank. Uh, I was curious about the upfront thing too, about how Joy stated it, what's their actual position. Uh, I was also curious what, uh, what's going on with the fund drive starting on May Day. Maybe we might, might want to reconsider that or is that a plan? Not sure about that. So I'm sure there's lots of things happening in May Day. We, a lot of times we did a live broadcast from uh, one of the labor events. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. Oh, I said May 1st. Oh, okay. Well, then forget that. And then I can't believe what you said, so I'd like to know what's more going on and uh, what's going on um, with your position. I, you know, I'm kind of shocked about this, so I'd like to also hear more about that. I'm assuming that's what Brian's motion might be, so I'll just sit, hold on. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not in... We're moving very efficiently, and I thank the group. I'm ready to turn to Andrew for responses, but one last chance for people to raise a question before we move to responses. Seeing none, Andrew? You're ready for me, okay. Yes. Uh, Janet, um, I'm perfectly happy to comply with the outside grievance protocol. Um, there's been no official upside grievance. There are five people on that panel. Well representing the staff, paid, unpaid, CWA, equal opportunity. Um, the panel agreed unanimously to the decision. Um, I signed off on it. Uh, there was some dispute about revealing some of the uh, proceedings, the process of the panel which I kicked over to Pacifica HR and asked if this was appropriate. Like uh, members, some members who've had experience with hiring on the UPSO committee, she felt it was not 
appropriate to reveal the proceedings of any higher uh, committee. Uh, there was private and personal information implicit in that information. Um, Joy asked about the upfront hire. There are no benefits for this hire. It's only for when the vacation, a vacation is necessary for the host. And these two personnel, these two unpaid staff people, will be taken in as paid staff for that period, uh, for that period of vacation. Um, I'm not, I don't know regarding FSRN, will the Pacific National Office pay what they owe? I can't, can't answer that. Um, thank you, Ramses, for your comments about up front. I think it was a good hire. Um, I was pleased with that process too. I think it was fairly, uh, fairly held, fairly proceeded fairly, and I think it was a good hire. <coughs> the uh, JR situation, I think <coughs> that would be something in executive session. I have said publicly that the matter was taken out of my hands. There seems to be some dispute about that, but I'll leave that for executive session two. Um, same with you, Frank, up front. I think I've made myself clear on that one. Um, I can't really talk more about the GM situation. I just I know about as much as you do and what I've mentioned at this board publicly. It's true, May Day is the first. Uh, it's just the way the calendar fell. We've discussed it. Uh, one of the problems is that to get 24 days of fundraising and not take it through Memorial Day, we need to project backwards or forwards, whichever way you're looking at it, from the, from the weekend of the 24th, which is the Memorial Day weekend, where there's really nobody in town. We really can't expect, expect to do very well, so we projected backwards to get a start date, and it fell on a Monday, which was May 1. That's, that's why it's there currently. Oh, it is starting on Monday. Yes. It's a Wednesday. Yeah, what am I talking about here? Tuesday the 30th. Um, <laughs> hang on. Um, yeah, Wednesday the 1st. I thought it was originally April 30th. Yeah, that's right. It's the 4th. Uh, so, sorry, I'm looking at April. Um, I'm confused here. Yeah, it's, a, it's a Wednesday. May 1st is a Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so Frank was right. That's the starting of April. 